Hello and welcome to Putting CLIL into Practice, uh, the course for Erasmus Plus teachers held at the University of Medicine in Plotdiv, July of 2018. Today we're going to talk about guiding input and working specifically with texts. Uh, another uh, clip we'll have a look at uh, multimedia input. Today we'll look at text. And um, it's interesting to look at ideas in texts and how those ideas are structured almost invisibly within text. Because one of the, uh, the, the areas I like to explore with teachers is what those ideas' structures are in the texts, in their subjects. Sometimes they're easy to spot in their textbooks, other times they're, they're less uh, easily identifiable and it's useful for teachers to uh, practice seeing what the structures of the ideas are so that they can take those structures to help them create guided reading activities. Uh, in a nutshell, that's what uh, this part of the course looks at. We can look at um, simple matching activities, such as a text on flooding that has uh, headings, paragraphs, and images that students have to sort and match headings with paragraph and image. Um, those are fairly straightforward to do and uh, they practice um, coherence of ideas uh, for students. Slightly freer reading activities with uh, text with, for students in small groups, they uh, can have headings that follow a certain shape, so you might have text that's organised into a tree diagram, such as this example on coal as a source of electricity, um, and together they talk through the headings and the descriptor cards and decide where the headings and the descriptor cards go. So actually that not all of the shapes around the classroom are necessarily the same. They agree and disagree with each other to, to uh, read and sort the cards in the right way, create their own shape. Other reading and information transfer type activities are reading uh, with a text and, and transferring the key ideas from the text into a table of some kind. So you have columns and rows and cells where information from the text fits in the table. Uh, those are quite useful as well for the same idea. And they can be group reading activities too, or from individual first reading, compare with a partner reading after that. In history, um, Teachers often get students to work with timelines, and we can look at linear text alongside a timeline, perhaps with a map, such as um, for the Battle of Hastings, that look at the uh, events leading up to the battle, and consequently after the battle, uh, reading a linear text, placing events on a map, and producing a timeline of events themselves, again individually or in pairs or groups. Um, Alternative energy sources is another very good example where uh, students look at a, a table with headings of different types of energy and they've got descriptors that look at the for and against of a certain type of energy, whether it's a natural source of energy or um, nuclear energy, for example, renewable or um, a fossil fuel energy source. And again, they sort their cards into the right place. Uh, they can do that with or without the original linear text. They can be card texts that the students have and they simply have to place them in the right position in the table. Um, looking at in, in biology at um, nutrition and health as well. Uh, so how uh, nutrition is related to certain illnesses. That again fits a certain tabular structure or also flow diagram structure because we have cause and effect, cause and consequence to do with certain diets and diseases. Um, and we get teachers to explore these structures, these conceptual structures within text, produce the structures mm -hmm. in a blank template form and talk about activity type design to marry the structure with the text. So that students, either alone or in pairs or small groups, work with these idea structures to process text content into the structure the teachers have identified. In a nutshell, that's guiding input with text work 
that uh, we'll look at on the course. Come and find out more.